All right, guys, I thought I'd do a somewhat quick video on my Eligu Mars resin printer. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos, I do have six FDM printers. Anyways, I've been 3D printing for about three years, and I've always kind of resisted the urge to get a resin printer. Just based on things I've heard about them, they're messy, hard to clean up, dangerous, toxic, all those things. And to be honest with you, I haven't found any of those things to be true at all, and I'm... I'm pleasantly surprised by the workflow it's not as bad as I thought it would be I am keeping this printer in my garage instead of my house because I just don't want to you know have anything go wrong while we're sleeping or something not that I would run this while I'm sleeping um, but what I'm finding is I can make some really small fine detail items that I can't do with my FDM printers that will be especially helpful for some of the things I'm doing at work. Um, just playing around some of the things I've made. This is a little phone holder that I do print in FDM and it's, the items are coming out really nice. Now this isn't super high resolution. This is like 100 microns or 0.100, not the 0 0.050, but this is the ABS like uh, resin. So it's flexible it doesn't stay clear and I think that's partially from washing with alcohol I think with these clear resins you're supposed to use water or something else but I'm still happy with them so that that's coming out great my Cosmo forklift that I normally print with the FDM printer coming out fine the only thing I found and then and it's something I did in the slicing software um, there's supposed to be holes back here and they're there I can see the supports down inside there it just filled that in for some reason. I need to figure that out. And then this is uh, one of my battery holders that didn't complete. And I know the reason why this didn't complete and that was because when the program was slicing and then transferring to the thumb drive, I pulled it out halfway through and so it only saved half of the, the G code. But it came out good too in the fit. They say this ABS has about 7% shrinkage uh this fits my battery just fine so uh we'll see when i make more mechanical stuff how the fit is on everything but it's definitely finer detail even at the higher not so high resolution so what i have here is my printer is done uh i just printed these i'm making them for work they're reducers so we use these this quarter inch line and we pump an adhesive through it to apply flock to uh, rubber parts but sometimes the fins are really small and you need to reduce the size. So this is a quarter inch line with a 3 16th internal, 170 thousandths. So I'm reducing this down to like, I don't know, less than two millimeters. So on an FDM, I would certainly not be able to print something like this. It's got a barb on it. I know it's kind of blurry, I'm getting too close. There's a pass through, the barb's there smaller on this end so I have what's awesome also about the resin printer and I didn't realize it with this version I'm like I'm not an expert on these but there's two types this one's the type that burns burns the whole image at one time so it doesn't matter if I have one of these on there or 32 of them it takes the same amount of time which is incredible to me so this what's in there right now is 32 of these and I'm gonna break those off here real quick I did buy one of the AnyCube wash and cure stations. Well worth the money if you're gonna do this. It's almost as expensive as the printer, but I think it's a must have. It is. I'll take the lid off. I'll put my alcohol over here. Real simple, turn the knob. Sometimes I like to let any extra drip out. You can see all the items on there. They all look like they printed. 32 of them. Which is, it's, again, it's just incredible that I can print one or 32 and it takes the same amount of time. Very convenient. They come off fairly easy. Uh, there is a little bit of mushrooming or elephant's foot. That's simply just a Z-height issue, but I'd rather have it stick and have a little bit of that mushroom than to not have them stick. 
Because in the very beginning, when I first started running this printer, I was having problems with the print sticking to the film. And I watched a couple videos, and I think one of the ones that's the the best one as far as keeping prints sticking to the build plate. So what I typically do is I'll clean this off. There's not normally stuff stuck to it. But what I do is I'll take some of the resin and I'll wipe it. I'll wipe it on the base. Before I started doing this, I was probably only getting about 50% 50, 50 uh, success rate on my prints, but ever since I've been adding resin back to the build plate, I haven't had a failure yet. So with this, so all I'll do is I'll stick it back on here. Get my rubber glove out of the way. Push it on all the way, tighten it back down. I'll put the lid back on it. I want to print more of those, so I'm just going to do this. Move this out of the way. And down here, I'm just going to go to print. I'm going to select the one that I just printed. It actually puts a picture of it on there. And I'm just going to hit start. And that's it. Super, super quiet. I mean, it's basically silent. The only time I hear any noise is when the uh, vacuum when the when the bed goes down into the vat of resin and comes back up, you can hear kind of a pulling sound. But from there, what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to kind of slosh these around in there. Again, it's way more convenient when you can actually use this the way it's intended. And I might actually do that. I'm just a little afraid because they're down inside the blades not in the basket like they're supposed to be. So with this, the wash cure station, I would just select the wash mode. And I'm gonna do six minutes. I'll take this bed off, which just pops off. The blades are magnetic, or the blade inside here is magnetic. It will not run without the lid on, so I'll put the lid back on. And I'll hit start. And it'll rotate one way for six minutes and uh, rotate the other way for, or I'm sorry, one way for three minutes and then it'll reverse rotation and spin the other way for three minutes. Now I'm just hoping that I don't damage those with them in, being in there with the blade. Typically you'd be in that basket, like I said, but. So while that's doing that and that's printing, I'll open my computer up. Let me cut the video and I'll restart it here in a second. All right, I thought I'd walk you through the software real, real quick. Um, I'm, by, I'm by no means an expert. I'm, I figured out my way through it. It's actually pretty simple. Um, there's basic settings. Not, I don't think it's anywhere as complex as an FDM slicing software. Some of the key things you need to understand is that with the resin that you're using, there's exposure times that they recommend. They tell you basically the density. So there's some selections in the software uh, to allow you to make good prints. So basically what I'll do with this is I'll open up over here. I'll open the file that I want to print. So I made a slight modification to the, the items I showed earlier. I want to make the barb a little smaller to get easier on the tube. So I'm going to open that up. It's going to come in. Now keep in mind, this is actually reversed from the way it's going to print. So you want to carefully look at what you need. So this is the way it's going to print. So if I was printing it like this, I would need supports because this is actually a void. It'd be printing in the air, which we know we can't do that very well. So what I'm going to do is I want the wider part on the bottom. I'm going to click on it, go to rotate. I'm going to go over here to the X axis and just rotate two times. So a total of 180 degrees. And that's the orientation that I want it in. I won't require any type of support printing like this. So then the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this. So you'll get two, and then the next time it's going to clone two of them. Oh, clone cured model. Well, let's do it a little different this time. I know I want like 32, so four times eight. I know I can fit 32, so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to go to auto layout and click center. 
I'm gonna put everything on the bed the way I need it. So I got four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's 32 items. And like I said in the previous portion of this video, it doesn't matter if I'm printing one or 32, it takes the same amount of time. So I'm gonna go to settings over here. So the machine, Elegu Mars Pro. So it's a preset that's already in there. It gives you all the basic information. I don't need to mess with that. The type of resin, uh, cost per resin, and then the resin density, which that's correct for the resin that I have. Then the print settings. I'm gonna do the 0.100 layer height. The bottom layer count, I think that's just like, um, if it were a hollow item or it had infill, that it would do five solid layers. I, I'm not totally sure, but I, I believe that's what it is. And then the exposure time is how long it will cure each layer. And then of course you have a bottom exposure time, which is longer. And I think that's to get it to stick to the build plate, if I'm not mistaken. Please somebody let me know if I'm wrong. The light off delay and the bottom light off delay, I'm not sure what those are for. I haven't had to change them. Then of course you have like speeds over here, retract speed, lifting speed, bottom lift speed. Those I've left standard. Uh, you can do an infill grid 3D, then a percentage, but I'm not doing infill, I'm doing solid. And then advanced, is this an anti-aliasing? Uh, that's, it's a, it's a camera term, and I guess this, this is kind of like a camera or a, t a television screen. It uses some setting to make it cleaner. Uh, so if you wanted to add support, you'd come up here, and as you can see, there's a top, middle, and bottom, and then a raft. These are all the settings. I haven't really messed with supports. From what I've heard, you should run heavy support because there's light, medium, and heavy. I've only done a couple prints with supports. Everything I print, just like with my FDMs, I try to design so they don't need supports. Less materials used and it's faster to print. So I'm not gonna use supports. I'm gonna remove all. It did build a raft. That's the only thing it would require because these are automatic, uh, what the computer thinks or the software thinks you would need for supports. So really that's it. I go back to settings. I go to slice and it should slice it fairly quickly. It's not real complex. And that's it. So it's gonna tell me my resin's normal, my volume, the weight, the price is $1.16 based on the cost of the resin and an hour and 11 minutes. So if I were to put one on there, it'd be an hour and 11 minutes, which is crazy to me. So it also tells me my exposure time uh, and all that stuff, layer heights, everything's down here, just to let me know. So I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna go to my work files. And that's it. And then when I'm done with this other print, I'll just get my thumb drive, stick it in here and save it, and that'll be it. So if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching. I thought I'd show you the curing process with this uh, AnyCube wash cure station. It's pretty simple. I just laid all 32 of those little reducers onto the the uh, build plate, or not the build plate, but the rotation plate. Put the lid on, because again, it won't run without the lid on. And then I come over here and I change it from wash to cure, and I do six minutes. It seems to be enough. Uh, I don't know if different resins require different rates of cure. I'm sure they do, but six minutes seems to be enough. So you hit start, and it'll run for six minutes. Pretty simple. Again. I think that that 100, and, and I see them down to 150 with coupons. I think I paid 169 for mine. Uh, it's well worth it. It just makes it easier. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys.